Hello, welcome back to the channel. Let's get after it. Up, do our eyes deceive us? I guess if you have a conspiracy mind, it makes sense, right? Yeah. We know the symbols and they still throw it in our faces. Makes sense though, right? The halftime show is one of the most viewed events every single year. What a time to harvest the energy from the masses, right? I know, you'll call me crazy then still deny the symbolism. That's Madonna's halftime show. She pops her top and we see what her costume really is. Understand that sports in general are used to specifically preoccupy our minds with stuff that doesn't even matter. So you think basketball is safe from this? This is the Staples Center, AKA the Lakers Arena. You guys catching what that looks like? Cause it looks a lot like a reptilian eye to me. Yeah, you call it a coincidence until you see one of the biggest stars in basketball throwing up the same exact symbols. Hmm. Oh, and what are those? What does that mean? If you know, you know, and I know you know. They don't hold rituals here. It's all just crazy speculation, right? Man, this stuff's weird. It's like the more of it I see, the more brazen they get with it. It doesn't seem like they're trying to hide it. These cosmonauts encountered angels. In 1984, three cosmonauts encountered something unexplainable aboard the Soyuz 7 space station. Well, you see, the cosmonauts were studying the Earth's atmosphere when the space station's interior started flooding with a warm golden light. Trying to find the source of illumination, they peered out of the porthole, and to their astonishment they saw several ethereal humanoid figures, each measuring approximately 10 meters in height, sporting delicate wings and serene expressions. And as unbelievable as it may sound, the cosmonauts documented the whole incident, capturing photos and making detailed notes for a whole 10 minutes before the apparitions vanished. Some speculated that this could either be an extraterrestrial encounter or something of divine presence, while others dismissed it as hallucinations. But till this day, no one has an explanation for what was witnessed. With all the evidence presented, I bet you're wondering if... I'm not wondering if, I don't buy it for a second. If they supposedly saw these things for 10 minutes and they're standing there taking photos and documenting what they see, where are the photos at? If the story got out, shouldn't the photos get out? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Why we see this ripple effect happening in the sky is going to blow your mind. Now this is what resonant frequencies look like when they are pitched into water. So different frequencies are being pitched into this water and it creates different shapes and different patterns. Now let's take a look at what this frequency does to sand, 4129. See this pattern? Looks very similar to this pattern now, doesn't it? This pattern happens because they are beaming ELF frequencies into the sky. And this is exactly what they are using to do this. It is called HARP and it's run by the military. Now you can literally go outside and observe this yourself. They drop chemicals from planes, then they use HARP to disperse those chemicals and block out the sun. Now for all the sheep, all you gotta do is look into this stuff. They literally admit they're spraying millions of tons of chemicals into the atmosphere to block out the sun. And you can go look up the hundreds of patents the US has on weather control and doing exactly what I'm telling you. This is what a normal sky looks like, guys. And this is what weather modification looks like. This is why you don't see skies like this in Mexico because they ban weather modification. They put this right in your face of all of your favorite TV show. Now the reason I make these videos is because the collective consciousness is shifting. We could be one person waking up a way that will shift the collective consciousness and in turn take down our suppressors. They have been deceiving you your whole lives and the real truth to everything is found within. Peace and They're definitely doing some uh, weather manipulation and stuff. I mean the proof was right there. And Bill Gates, if, if it's something nefarious, Bill Gates is involved in it. The scary thing is, is that they are going to continue to play with this stuff and play God. And we're all going to have to suffer the repercussions. And there's just no way to know right now what those are going to be. Look at everyone filming, man. <laughs> That's eerily similar to uh, the lady that saw something and freaked out and said that there was somebody not real on the plane interested to see how this where this story goes whenever it uh gets a little more information out there anybody know anything about this story please drop a line down in the comment and let me know i'm interested in finding out what happened was they put the lake in that spot to cover up the ruins oh. interesting interesting so, 4d chess right there yeah so so but you're saying all lakes are man-made you have 53,000, so there's, if you're gonna go with how many are in America, that's a lot. 
right? So 53,000 and the average lake sits at about, you know, the average, well, if we're going to go with dams and everything, they sit at about 40%. So if they're technically low, right, that's what they try to tell you. It's always low. It's never actually full. So they're always going to pull the hole while we're running water because there's not a lot of water in those dams. But it's interesting because even the Hoover Dam and that whole thing that was built, that's all part of the Phoenix and Arizona right here in this state. And that's got a lot of ancient lineage over there too as well. And it's interesting because that was right, at, right, right around the time with the Phoenix Fire, which was 1916 on September 23rd. So that's kind of right around that time when all those things were happening. But this water deceiving is basically you have these controllers who hold the water up here and then they say down here, you're running the water. When in reality, there's water coming out of the earth. So for example, California had an earthquake. This was three years ago. Northern California had an earthquake. And all of a sudden, one of the rivers just started pouring water. And the people were like, what the heck is going on? There's water coming out of the river. The river hasn't had water ever, right? So people were completely baffled that now water is coming back. Then on top of that, you had back in the 1950s when the lakes were actually low, They used primary water, which is the water coming up from inside the earth, to refill Lake Elsinore when it got low in the 1950s. So the people who are up here holding the water know of primary water because they use it to their advantage. And someone, if we're going to take it to another level, was saying that's how they did floods. They understood how to get that primary water out of the earth, and then they could flood an area. So it's interesting with the whole primary water because we're never taught about it. We're always taught about these clouds, which who knows what they are. But these clouds with this rainwater cycle, and if we stop getting rain, all of a sudden we're going to run out of water. Okay. But if you come to Arizona and you see how green it is over here, these trees are getting water from somewhere else. They're not getting water from the sky. They're getting water from deep inside the earth. Saul starts to uh, make all the laws against collecting rainwater start to make a lot more sense. They don't want you to have any control over your own water supply or your own food supply. <clears throat> Same reason why you don't see, like, why there's laws against, uh, this is the same reason why there's laws against planting fruit trees in most cities. They don't want people to have free access to food. Hey, I make a new video just like this one every single day. You should hit that subscribe button and come back and join me tomorrow. We're appearing on their kitchen floor, and the reason why is going to leave you shocked. Now, I've, I've just now found this article. It's called The Faces of Belmaz. This family was in their home, and... All of a sudden, they started seeing these weird faces coming up on their kitchen floor. But then the governor of this area, which is called Belmaz, ordered a someone to come in and cut the concrete out so that way they could analyze it. Well, they couldn't figure out what was going on. But every time that they would patch back the concrete, these faces would just appear again and again. And then all of a sudden... After they took it up again, they started digging underneath the floor, and they discovered a whole graveyard. They discovered a whole graveyard, and I assume that's what they're claiming is the reason that the faces kept showing up. They didn't even look like faces to me. Uh, People forget so quickly that our mind likes to make patterns. It likes to find patterns and see things. Uh, The wallpaper in my grandmother's bathroom whenever I was a kid, I always felt uncomfortable sitting in there because it had a strange pattern on it that looked like somebody staring at you. But it wasn't, and I don't, even as a kid, I didn't assume that it was actually something there. It just gave me the creeps. People just read too much into silly stuff. I hope they didn't have any of their kids at the bottom of that slip and slide. A fisherman caught a mysterious deep sea monster and it hasn't been identified. A New York resident was fishing on a boat just off of Coney Island back in 2020 when he captured an unknown creature. Let's check out the footage. After the video surfaced, the internet began to run wild on what the creature could be, and some were even saying that this was an undiscovered species. But according to scientists, the animal is most likely a clear-nosed skate that has been severely mutated because of toxic waste that has been dumped into the ocean from a nearby landfill. This theory makes the most sense because since 2020, we haven't located another one of these animals. But here's the crazy part. Nobody thought about grabbing a DNA sample from this creature. So we'll never have 100% certainty on what it was. It could be that this is from like uh, some sort of uh, 
waste dumping. But I'd say the most likely explanation is that they, they caught something that's usually deep sea and found its way closer to the surface. They shouldn't have thrown it in. They should have hang, held on. They should have held on to it and got some tests run on it. Now all anyone could do is speculate. Behind rocks. Go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, move, move. Sheesh. Man, oh man. It was uh, three or four videos back, maybe, that we saw that volcano eruption from like a good distance away. It was like they're on the peak of one mountain watching the peak of the volcano across from them blow off and uh man that lava went fast it covered the whole side of that mountain in a matter of seconds i can't imagine how terrifying they must have been feeling like they were reliving pompeii because that that was ooh, it was intense bro Bro, you see? No, bro, no, no, bro, 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 look, guys, oh, look, look, oh, 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 good, bro, oh, we gotta go, oh, we gotta go, bro, oh, good, bro, bro, you don't see that, bro, that's a UFO, bro, what the f is that, bro, what the, f cause what is going on, bro, bro, I know you see that. Bro, I got. I'm getting it on camera, cause oh, what? that oh. is a whole UFO, oh. bro. Bro, that finna take off, bro. That is finna take off, bro. They slowing down. The f they slowing down for? You? That don't look like they slowing down. Bro, but you see that up there over it? Yeah. And then you look, look, look at that cloud right there. Bro. This didn't look like a UFO to me. It, I mean, it says that on the video that they're in Kansas City, Missouri. So I'm, I would imagine they're close to a stadium. It's getting dark. It looks like those are stadium lights, like spotlights, just going back and forth. That's what I think's going on. It's just catching the clouds. Be careful. The next time you see a puddle of water on the beach, if you're not careful, you could accidentally become infested with sand piranhas. Now these tiny shoreline isopods might look cute at first glance, but they pack a strong bite for their size and can leave you with irritated red spots. So make sure if you see them swimming around a pool, keep your hands and feet out. No thank you. <laughs> you know, watching these videos, you occasionally come across information that you wish you did not have. And between sand piranhas and those sand worms that I've been seeing a lot of videos of uh, really makes me think twice about going to the beach. The mountains are calling. Oh my God, which way is the shore? <laughs> don't panic, don't panic. Which way is the shore? So the waves are going towards the shore. That way, I think. It's only about a quarter mile that way to the shore, but if you got turned around, it's about 75 miles to the next shore on that side. So if it weren't for these waves right here, I'd be screwed. I could take my clothes off and no one would see me. is a lot braver than I am. There's no way that I would be out there floating around taking that kind of a risk that far away from the shore, especially in those kind of conditions. Could the masked person playing the piano in the weekend's music video be Michael Jackson? Some people believe that Michael Jackson was behind the weekend's success. 
In the clip of the song, Save Your Tears, the masked person gives the microphone to the weekend, showing his support. The resemblance of the masked person to Michael Jackson caught the attention of Michael fans, and they claimed that the masked person was Michael Jackson. Abel's admiration for Michael is known to everyone. Could Michael Jackson be helping The Weeknd? I've always kind of compared The Weeknd to Michael Jackson uh, with some of his vocals and stuff. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have too. I don't believe that that's Michael Jackson in that video. I think a more likely reason that they have a Michael Jackson lookalike is because of The Weeknd's fascination and obsession with his hero, Michael Jackson. I think he just wanted the symbolism of getting handed the mic from his hero. That's why that's in the video. There's gotta be something. <laughs> Here's how I think they're pulling that one off. You can see that to the left of the shower, there's a closet door or a door that goes somewhere. I'm assuming it's a closet. I'm thinking that someone is actually in that shower. They're reaching their hand up and pulling the shower curtain back. He's not in an angle where you can see them. And then either using string or someone in the other corner of the bathroom that you can't see immediately to the right of the door, someone's reaching over with something and grabbing the top of the door to pull it closed because you can't see it in the video. And so once the door closes, then that frees the person who is in the shower to step out of the shower and climb into that closet. And that's how I think they did it. There is a giant hole in Siberia and no one really knows why it's there. This hole seemed to have appeared out of nowhere and scientists still don't know exactly how it formed. Now some have speculated that it's a sinkhole but if you look closely, you can see the dirt and debris is on the outside of the hole. This means it was some sort of explosion. Now this has led others to think it was caused by an asteroid hitting the planet. But as far as scientists can tell, this isn't the cause either. So what is it? What has caused this mystery hole? Well, the most likely explanation is an event called a gas emission crater. Melting ice releases an enormous amount of trapped gas, which causes a major explosive event. Well, I thought this was going to be a mystery, but the commentator kind of sucked the fun out of it. That's ball lightning. I'm starting to become fascinated by that stuff. Uh, the more videos I see of it, the more erratic it looks. And then you see a video like that where it almost looks like someone's got it under control. It's just moving so slowly and methodically across those tracks. I, my only comment on this is I wish that they would have left the video running a few seconds longer so we could have seen what it did whenever it reached those trees. Gorillas are becoming addicted to smartphones. The Toronto Zoo has urged visitors to stop showing the gorillas photos and videos on their phone, but for good reason. Some of the content being shown can be upsetting and affect their relationship and behavior within the gorilla family. One gorilla in particular has been described as, quote, the epitome of a teenager because he's so addicted to the screen. But this addiction is becoming more and more common in zoos. Last year, a gorilla in a Chicago zoo was so fixated on watching a phone, he didn't realize his roommate was coming to attack him. Now, attacking each other is a way to establish hierarchy but the constant losses can lead to bullying within the habitat maybe evolution is real maybe we do come from monkeys they're even uh, addicted to smartphones like all of us i am witnessing a glitch in the f matrix and i swear to god if this squirrel doesn't come back out i'm gonna have a panic attack because see, do you see his nose i'm not going crazy oh my god wait stop it 
there's nothing there. There's not a grate there. There's not a grate there. Where did this just come from? What the f He just came out of nothing! Don't run towards me! <laughs> I actually have a theory on this. You can see that the road starts to turn to the right. I think that as it turns to the right, it dips and you it dips down and you can't see that it's dipping down because the shadow of the tree is just in the right spot so it creates like an optical illusion it looks like the road is flat right there but I bet if she was to drive around that corner it would dip a little just enough to hide a small little squirrel we received a call yesterday evening uh, regarding the reopening of the depression behind me on Faithway Drive uh, so we responded and in conjunction with fire rescue and the sheriff's office. The neighboring properties were safe. There's no reason for concern. We're gonna have our geotechnical experts on scene. They're gonna do a scientific assessment. Um, you go ahead and look at it and make sure there's nothing out of bounds. And uh, assuming that there's nothing insane, we will begin the process of remediation. It's gonna most likely be filling it in in the same manner we did in 2015. That's one of the reasons we undertook that strategy because it allows us to kind of have a set standard of doing things. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and draw a play up in the sand every time. I certainly wouldn't want to live next to that, and I doubt anyone else would either. I think the worst part about that video is the sad state of the, uh, the neighborhood. If you bought into that neighborhood 15 years ago, bought your dream home and thought, oh man, I'll live in this until I need to downsize when all the kids move out and then we'll sell it and make us a clean profit of a few hundred thousand. Now 15 years has passed by and no one wants to buy the house next to the big hole. <laughs> well, that's the end of this video, guys. I sure appreciate you hanging out. I hope you found the videos interesting. I'll be back here again tomorrow with another new video. Come back and join me. I'll see you tomorrow.